video, this is one of the most important videos I'm going to share with you because it really hits the main point, which is what kind of technology to get. And there are really two different types. You've got electronic and filters. That's pretty much it. You know, when it comes time to removing smoke, those are your choices. Now, um, personally, I'm a huge fan of filters, and I hate the electronic smoke eaters. Frankly, I don't think they're the right tool for the job, despite the fact that they have such a huge presence in the marketplace. Personally, I, I think the industry has been misled. A lot of people have said, buy the electrostatic. Why? Because no filters. And while that may be true, you know, e e oh, just drives me nuts. Yes, there are no filters, but without any filters, you have no carbon, which means you have no smoke odor and gas removal. So at best, electrostatic devices will capture particles right? Now, here's where the fallacy comes in. They say no filters, but yet some of the brands, when they realize they've got to deal with the odors, now they put in carbon filters anyway, which means you're buying filters, okay? So now you've got to buy the carbons, and you've also got to clean the devices, and if you've ever cleaned up anything that's been in a smoky environment for a while, you'll know it's tacky, sticky, and all around gross. I mean, seriously, tacky, like disgusting. The tar, the nicotine gets all over the machine, the smoke particles are in there, and the cleanup is extremely messy. Now you counter that to the filtration machines, where, as I pointed out in the previous maintenance video, you get 12 pre-filters. Once a month, you basically pop the machine open, Take out the pre-filter, stick a new one in. You've got six carbon filters. Every two months, when you're changing the pre-filter, you also change the carbon filter. And on an annual basis, you do the HEPA. You're disposing the filters, which means you don't have to clean that gunk off. It's like cleaning bugs off of your car to clean the tar and nicotine off of things. You need chemicals to strip it. You need heavy detergents. You need commercial dishwashers to take the electronic cells and wash them. Or you're out in the back with a hose and a scrub brush. It's really a nasty, ugly job. Here, you're basically taking that mess and throwing it out. And again, the good news is 197 bucks for a year worth of filters. All right. Now, let me talk to you about another reason why I don't like this. It's basically all about performance. You see, the electronic smoke eaters work by drawing in the smoke, and in here they supercharge, through electricity, the smoke particles. Then they have collection plates, which are oppositely charged. And the attempt is to collect the smoke particles as they come into the machine and attract them to this collection plate. The challenge is that once this collection plate gets a layer of smoke on it, guess what happens? Stops working. I mean, it flat out stops working. And that is like saying, you know, let's say you've got a stack of paper clips and you've got a big magnet. All right. Once you get a certain number of paper clips on the bottom of the magnet, you can't pick any more up. It simply doesn't conduct that electrical charge as well anymore. That's exactly the problem with electronic smoke eaters. Once they get dirty, the efficiency, which is here, starts dropping down there very quickly. And then what happens? Everybody says, well, they don't work as well as they used to. And then the entire industry starts to feel like smoke eaters don't work. So people stop buying them or they stop maintaining them. And the less they maintain them, the less they work. And now all of a sudden the government's got to come in and pass smoking bans because none of the bar owners have solved the problem. 
primarily because they've been sold a bill of goods by the smoke eater companies that are selling them electronic smoke eaters and not telling them or ensuring that they're cleaning the, the machines properly to get the benefit. So I, personally, I think the entire mess could have been avoided. Filter-based smoke eaters. And the great news about filters is 20 years down the line, as long as you're still changing the filters, they're going to work just as good as they did when you first brought them home. That is totally not the case with the electronic smoke eaters. At best, they've got a few year lifespan if you maintain them. Um, they've got expensive parts. I, I, know, you know, I know a lot of business owners that are spending hundreds of dollars a month just to get their electronic smoke eaters cleaned. Why? Because the job is so darn messy. So I'm very passionate about this because the entire industry is um, really affected by this, by this technology decision. And the truth of the matter is, the oldest, most simple technology doesn't get enough credit, and it should because it should win. Um, so that's just my two cents. I love filtration machines because they, they just continue to work. They're super easy to maintain. They're not that expensive to buy the filters compared to the electronic, which are difficult, time-consuming, messy to maintain. Uh, you end up having to buy carbon filters anyway, which means it's not free either. And I guarantee you, if you price it, go do it. Find out how much those carbon filters are. I guarantee you it's going to be at least $197 a machine just to deal with the gas stage, plus you've got all that messy cleanup to do. Again, that's just my opinion. Um, take it for what it's worth. And, uh, you know, if you're out there looking around, take this into consideration before you make an investment in smoke eaters. I think you'll really, really appreciate me sharing this with you. So um, I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks. Thanks.